Hi, I'm Larissa from Beekeeping Made Simple, and this video is about what bees do in the wintertime. Now, when I say wintertime, I'm not just talking about the season winter, but I'm also talking about what bees do when it's cold out. When it's warm out, the bees will leave the hive in search for food. But when it is cooler out, the bees will not be out flying, and they will be inside the hive clustering up. The bees do not hibernate the way bears do. They still need to eat food, and there is a time when the queen is actually still even laying eggs. So what happens is, even before winter time comes, and before it's cold out, the hive starts to prepare for winter. The population will go down in size as soon as there's not so much food to be gathered. The queen will stop laying so many eggs and until she reaches a point when she stops laying eggs altogether and there are no more baby bees within the hive. She will lay eggs for what we call the winter bees in the late summer and these bees actually have a higher body fat than the bees that you will see in the spring and summer. And that's why as a beekeeper it's really important to make sure that your hive is healthy and has low varroa mite levels in the late summer because that's when the winter bees are babies and you want these bees to be as healthy as possible so they can carry the hive through the winter. Another thing that happens before the cold of winter comes is that the drones get kicked out. And drones are what we call the male bees and they will be kicked out of the hive and they will be prevented from getting back in. The worker bees don't often actually flat out kill the drones, but the drones just cannot survive on their own without the hive. The beekeeper will also then see a pile of drones not far from the beehive. And the reason why these drones are kicked out is because they, their, their primary job is to mate with a queen. And since no mating is going on during the winter time, they're, they're eating their food storage and not really contributing much to the hive. And so that's why they are not allowed in anymore. <laughs> I might seem a little harsh, but you have to remember that everything is done for the benefit of the hive and not each individual bee. And the number one concern that the bees have is that they have, well maybe not the number one, but one of the main concerns is that they have enough food to get them through the winter until more flowers start to bloom. And so having all of these extra bees that aren't helping the hive, but are eating their food storage is not good for the survival of the hive. And so as it gets colder out and it is below 58 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when the bees will start to form a cluster within the hive. The bees will leave the hive throughout the winter to go on what we call a cleansing flight. And that is when they go do their business. You will, if there is snow on the ground, you will even see a little specks of orangey yellow on the snow. And that's them doing the cleansing flight is what we call it. But other than that, the bees will stay inside the hive clustered up. Now, as it gets colder and colder out, the cluster that the bees form gets tighter and tighter. And what I read from honeybeesonline.com, which is a great resource for information about bees and beekeeping, is that when it's not that cold out and in the 50s, the cluster can be like roughly 14 inches in diameter. But when it is cold out and below freezing, that cluster will get as tight as 10 degrees, um, 10 degrees, 10 inches in diameter. And within that cluster though, bees can walk around. Once it gets to be about middle of winter, that's when the queen will actually start laying eggs again. And bees will be walking around within that cluster. There will then be bees on the outside of the ball that are packed tightly together, vibrating the muscles in their thorax. And that's how they produce heat. So uh, the inside of this cluster is going to be 93 degrees to keep those baby bees warm. Now, before there are baby bees in the hive, in the very early stages of winter, the cluster won't be as warm because there is no brood to keep warm. The brood, it's very important that the brood is kept at a very specific temperature, both in the summertime, even when it's very hot out, and in the wintertime when it's very cold out. The adult bees can handle more of a fluctuation of temperature. Within this cluster, the bees will be facing inward with their butts pointing towards the cluster, or their heads pointing towards the cluster, their butts facing out. And they say that this cluster is roughly three inches thick. 
The population of the beehive goes down quite a bit. The population will vary depending on how the size of the hive and the strength of the hive in the summertime, but it can go down to as small as 10,000 bees or maybe even less. The cluster will usually start towards the bottom of the hive in the lower brood box, but on the upper section of the frames of that lower brood box and then go up into the lower part of the frames in the second box. So kind of in between those first two boxes of the hive. And as they need food, that cluster will slowly move higher and higher up within the beehive. So it's important that there are days when it is not freezing cold so that that cluster can not be so tight and the bees can move to sections where there is food. My first year keeping bees, I had a top bar hive and my cluster formed in the center and they moved to one side of the hive, starved to death, and there was honey on the other side of the hive. So as a beekeeper, you want to never open your beehive and pull frames of bees out or frames of brood out if it is below 65 degrees Fahrenheit. You do not, well, this, this varies depending on the beekeeper, but in my opinion, you do not want to open the hive. You can take off the lid and see if they need more food and you can add food. But I don't recommend inspecting a hive and checking on your bees at any point in the winter. However, some beekeepers do say that a very basic inspection when it's warm out and sunny and there's no wind is something that you should be doing. I don't really see what you can do to help or change the situation other than giving a beehive food. In my opinion, what the beekeeper does over the winter time is you, the two main things is that you wanna make sure that there's ventilation. So you wanna to continue to check on the hive, take your hive tool and make sure that if any dead bees have fallen where the lower entrance is, you want to scoop them out. I mean, not if, they're going to. And don't be alarmed if you see a lot of dead bees because that is going to happen and you want to continue to scoop them out so you have that lower entrance and you also want to make sure you have that upper entrance for ventilation and for bees to get out of the hive and for that warm air to chimney up and out. You also want to make sure that they have enough food. So when you're closing your hive up for the winter, you want to know how heavy is this hive. Maybe take your bathroom scale and put one side of the beehive on the scale, put the other side of the beehive on the scale. Add those two weights together, it's not going to be a exact measurement but that'll give you an idea of what your hive weighs or you can just tip your hive a little bit to give yourself an idea of how much your hive weighs and then over the months you'll see how the weight is going to go down and whether you need to give them food or not most beekeepers want to leave roughly 50 to 60 pounds of honey on their hive for the winter so that the bees have enough food until flowers start to bloom again. If you live in some of the northern states uh, in this country, you might wanna leave them closer to 70 pounds of honey, such as like upstate New York, Massachusetts, Vermont. And I do know a beekeeper in Maine who says that she prefers to leave 90 pounds of food on her beehive. And if you're not sure exactly how much weight you have on your hive other than weighing the hive another way to do it is to just count up the amount of frames you have of honey inside your hive a deep frame weighs about six pounds a medium-sized frame full of honey is going to be roughly three pounds and then the shallow is two and a half and some misconceptions that people have about honeybees and beekeeping in the winter time is that the bees are going to die from the cold and as I mentioned, the bees do a great job of vibrating those muscles and producing heat, creating that ball and keeping the bees and the brood warm. What are other problems that come along that people don't realize is um, the condensation that can build up. And the condensation happens when that warm air produced by the bees hits the cold air, like say, um, that's you know below the lid in your beehive and then condensation forms and drips down onto the cluster and that can cause the cluster to die and that's why people have moisture boards um, 
or use other things as insulation as well as to absorb the moisture. You can have an uh, empty eek or super full of wood shavings or dry white sugar. There's lots of ways that the beekeeper can prevent the condensation from dripping down onto their bees. Another common reason why hives might die in the winter is because of varroa mite problems. And as I mentioned, it's important to make sure that your winter bees, which are the bees that are babies in that late summer, early fall, are healthy. Because varroa mites, most of the varroa mites in your hive are going to be in with the brood feeding off of them, their babies are going to be feeding off of them, laying their eggs with them. And you really want to make sure that is not happening with your winter bees. You want them to be as healthy as possible. And then um, the second part of varroa mite management, which some beekeepers are not aware of, is that even though you put a treatment in to keep mite levels low for these winter bees when they're babies, a ton of robbing happens because there's not as many flowers as there used to be. The hive populations are still pretty high from the summertime and so this robbing causes mites to spread everywhere. Bees from someone else's hives are coming over to your hive trying to rob them, trying to steal honey and in the process they're dropping mites down into your hive and so then you have another mite infestation just a month later and that's why people use oxalic acid as a dripple method or the vaporization inside their hive before they close it up for the winter. Uh, older queens also might not be able to bring a hive through winter because as I mentioned they do start to lay in the winter time and you want a queen that's healthy and young and who can handle the stress of winter time. Ventilation, people think that the hive needs to be as warm as possible, but actually you want to make sure there's ventilation. You want to make sure that that warm air has somewhere to go. You want to make sure that the dead bees aren't blocking up the entrances, that bees can get out to go on their cleansing flights when it's warm out. And you want to make sure they have enough food. They're going to need lots of honey and they're going to need some pollen as well because that is the protein that is fed to the brood, those baby bees. So my first few years keeping bees, I had them in Pennsylvania and had the pleasure of learning how to deal with wintertime beekeeping. Now we're in Hawaii and our wintertime is very different. So if you are curious about what bees do in the wintertime when there is no frost, it, it does vary a little bit here because I have bees in an area at higher elevations where it does go into the low 50s at nighttime as well as an area where it's still in the 80s and you know maybe down to the 70s at nighttime. So the bees are clustering up in the evenings at the higher elevations. And the wintertime issues when you have no frost are different, but there are still some problems. We don't have to deal with cold, but the bees still leave the hive. A there is considerably less food for them where where my hives are there's very little blooming uh, and without any frost you have really high levels of all insects um, so small hive beetles and varroa mites are the two main pests that really thrive here in this environment because of this, um, we have a beehive populations getting very small. We have a ton of robbing going on. Uh, there's a, what we call dearth, which is when there's not a lot of food coming. There's not a lot of food to be gathered because there's very few flowers blooming. And then we have a small hive beetle population that is just through the roof. And a combination of these can cause for um, beetle infestations and hives to collapse. So what, what I do here at my farm is we have a large chest freezer and I will remove excess of honey, harvest a lot of it, but I will leave uh, maybe a, a half a super per beehive, depending on the size of the hive, in storage so that I can feed it back to the bees over the course of the winter time which is something that I just did this past weekend. The hives are not very happy. They um, are dealing with a 
big change in the amount of food that they can gather. The populations are starting to go down. Um, this is a time that a lot of beekeepers will requeen if that is something that they do uh, and a time that they might split their beehives. The hives can handle being split. However, they will really build back very quickly unless you feed them a, a sugar syrup. And so it's just a little bit of a, a juggling act for us here to make sure that the bees have enough food that they can sustain the hive, but not too much food that small hive beetles will take advantage. And of course, continuing to monitor varroa mite levels and do what we have to to keep mite levels low and help keep the hives healthy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our free ebook, The Seven Steps to Getting Started Keeping Bees. You can download it right at our website, beekeepingmadesimple.com. Hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell icon if you want to get emails from YouTube when we put up a new video, which is every week.